Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. Since Proxmox 8.1 dropped just a few days ago, a lot of people have been asking me about the new features, specifically around the SDN, the Software Defined Network. Now, I've already done the other part, which is to set up the Gotify notifications, and that's awesome. I do recommend to do that if you haven't already. But this video is going to give you a really quick and dirty review of how to set up SDNs. Now, you might be thinking, why do I want to set that up? Well, it's really useful because it creates various networks behind Proxmox. So that means you don't need to expose this using the traditional method with PCIe cards, Ethernet cards, etc. Instead, you can create those networks within Proxmox via software. So you can create all of your networks that you want to within Proxmox and you can still route that traffic out because you can do source NAT translation. I'll show you how to do that right now. So heading over to the Proxmox documentation, this is probably the least obvious bit about this whole process. If you've installed Proxmox fresh with 8.1, you won't need to do this. But if like me, you're upgrading from previous versions, you're gonna have to follow these installation steps here. Now, first of all, you're gonna have to install the libv network Perl, and then you're gonna have to add interfaces D, this source bit here, to your ETC network interfaces. Then you're going to have to install DNS mask and also the Python tools. Now, the important thing here is as well that you do this on every one of your Proxmox nodes. So if you're just running the one, just go and install it on the one. If you've got two or more, obviously go and install it on each one of those. So let's hop into Proxmox now and I'll show you what this looks like once it's completed. So over on my Proxmox, and I've got two nodes, as you know by now, but the process is the same for each one. So in here, I've gone to the shell, and now I'm in the ETC network interfaces file. So if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see all the way down here, where I've added in the ETC network interfaces.d slash star. You need to have that at the bottom of this file, and then you need to save it. Once you've done that, you're ready to get into the SDN. Now the SDN can be found on the data center tab, and then you need to click on SDN. Now, the first thing you need to do is configure a zone, and there are lots of different types of zone. So when you click add, you can see that there's simple, there's VLAN, QNQ, VXLAN, EVPN. I'm only gonna to touch on the simple, which is basically the same as having a dumb switch. But the process for a VLAN is pretty much identical, and I might come onto this in a later video if you need it, but I've already done a ton of videos on VLANs, and this follows basically the same principle. So as I mentioned, I'm just gonna to touch on the simple. So here you can see I've created one, and the process for that is straightforward. I click simple, I give it an ID. In this case, you can see I just called it test. I specified an MTU. Now this is for transmission size on the network. And I had some issues with this. I had to manually specify 1460 as the MTU. I'd be interested to know if you have left it as auto and this worked, but for me, 1460 was the only value that I could get to work. Once you've done that, IPAM should already be pre-populated to use PVE, which is the default. And the only other thing you need to put in here, well, if you want to use DHCP, which I imagine you will, for automatic IP provisioning, you need to click automatic DHCP. Once you've done that and given it a name, click add. That will create something like this, which if I edit, you can see all of that is pre-populated. So once you've done that, you've created your zone. And you'll see here on the left, I've got the local network, which is created by the default installation. And now I'll start to get one for test. So once we've created a zone, we need to create a virtual network. So again, we need to hit this create button. We need to give it a name and we need to give it a zone. So the zone will be the one you've just created. And then you can decide whether you want it to be VLAN aware. I'm not doing that in this video, but again, the process is really simple. And I showed you in my previous video what VLAN aware means for when we set up OpenSense. And I also did it for Sophos XG. So once you've configured that, you'll end up with something like this. So test, 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 there we go, dead straightforwards. Now that you've created the VNet, you need to create a subnet to go on this network. So to do that, you head over onto the right and you click create. Now, when you click create, really straightforward, same as you've done probably a million times for your firewall or switch, create any IP address range that you want to, 
specify where the gateway is going to be on that. And importantly, you can do SNAP, so source network address translation. What this does is it allows it to access the internet. So i.e., well, not just the internet, actually anything outside of this network. So that's really handy if you want something local on Proxmox, but you also want it to communicate with either your network or the broader network, AKA the internet. So once you've configured that, you'll have something that looks like this. So if I click edit, you can see all those values populated. I also went into the DHCP ranges tab. And if you remember earlier, when we clicked on zone, we did automatic DHCP, that box was ticked. So if you click on DHCP ranges, I've just put in a range here for 100.10 to 100.20. I've clicked OK and saved it. After that, you've got the options tab. There's nothing here that I needed to change for a simple SDN. And that's the same story for IPAM. Everything here is the same. Actually, this will be blank until you apply it. And the most important thing when you've done all of this or you make any changes, and it's really not obvious, I hope they change this in the GUI, is to click on SDN and then you need to hit apply. If you don't hit apply, none of this will get created, nothing will be applied. And when you do, you should get here a list of the SDN, the node and its status. And I've got two here because I've got two nodes. If you're only using one, you'll get a single entry. Now what do you do? How do you use this? Well, glad you've asked because I've created here two VMs. This VM here is SDN and this one is SDN2. This is one I've already created and is up and running. And if I do an IPA, you'll see here that it's picked up 192.168.100.10, which is that first IP within that reservation. So just to prove that I'm not lying here, creating a new VM, this has just been created from a clone. I've never turned this VM on. If I go to hardware, you'll know, you'll know that I haven't turned it on because this here is wrong. So rather than use the bridge, VMBR0 or any of my existing ones, I want to create I want to use test and then when I click OK that's now going to use test which is this network down here so now when I boot this machine up fingers crossed it should pick up an IP address and because this one already has 10 I suspect it's going to come up with a dot 11 IP address I'm going to let this boot up because it's a cloud image it's going to pull some updates etc and I'll see you on the other side so here, yeah, we know it's got internet because it's now going and picking up all of those updates, which is excellent. We've got that source net enabled. And if I run an IPA, yes, 192.168.100.11. And hopefully with any luck, we can ping our friend who is on number 10. There we go. There's SDN in under 10 minutes. So thanks for watching everybody, hopefully this gives you the tools now to set up an SDN within your Proxmox environment. And this is going to be great for those of you who want to set up a network within Proxmox and you don't want to have this all externally exposed. Great for not only security, but also for hardware as well. So give this a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Take care everybody.